Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This video is from Signals and Systems and it is about constant coefficient difference equations and here we'll be discussing example 2.15 and this is on the request of a student. Let's see. If you recall from my previous slide that we had discussed about the differential equations to be of this form. This is the general nth order equation. And similarly, we can describe the general uh, nth order difference equation like this. You can see here it is summation of the output. Here also it is summation of the output y. And this is the summation of xt. Here it is also summation of x shifted. Now why we are using shifted or the difference? Because in this case we are dealing with the uh, discrete signals. So I mean if you have to find from here and here you have to take the difference between the two. Similarly from here to here you have to take the difference between the two. And that is why it is difference equation and generally we write it in this form. Now this is n, n is equal to 0 and 1 and 2 etc. like this. Now since in the differential equations we solved uh, it in two parts. In the particular solution we found and also we found solution for the homogeneous equation. Similar methods can be adopted for different equation, but although a solution of y n can be developed following the approach of the differential equation, the discrete time case offers an alternative path. So we'll select an alternative way of solving this. And the alternative path is if you break this down, this was the equation that we said, the general equation. We break the left hand side into two parts. The first we take it from k0 to 0 and then this will be k1 to n. Now remember it is k0 to n. We have broken it into two parts, k0 to 0 and k1 to n. The right hand side remains as it is. Now if you put k is equal to 0 here, it will be a0, y, n minus 0. This one remains as it is. And then y, n minus 0 can be written as y, n. And from here, if we take this on the right hand side, we will get this equation. And Keeping y n, we have to divide by a naught, so 1 over a naught, the right hand side, and this is our equation 2.115. So this is a general equation. And now if you can see, this is the output at time n. This is n minus 1. So this is the previous value of the input because it is x therefore it is input of the previous value. And similarly this is the output of the previous value. y is for output and minus k is the previous value. So that means output at any time n depends on the previous value of the input and previous value of the output. Now, equation of this form is called recursive equation. Recursive means it is procedure that is repeated. So, the same procedure repeated time and again. Now, let's come on to the question. Find the impulse response of the system specified by a difference equation for this. And the input is given as k delta m. Now, first of all, let's try to understand or recall what is delta n. I hope you remember it is an impulse signal at time 0 or at n is equal to 0. Before this its value is 0, 
after this also its value is zero only at n is equal to zero it is present with a magnitude of one so this is called the impulse signal represented by delta n and when we say it is k times delta n that means k into one it will become k here and our system is represented by this differentiate difference equation so we write it down here and we have to find the output impulse response for this input okay so rewriting this one and then rearranging y n and removing this on the right hand side we get equation 2.119 and as we mentioned that this is the previous value y n minus 1 that is the previous value of the output so we are recalling the previous value or recursive we need previous value of the output y n minus 1 to calculate the current value so we have to find what is the value of y n 1 thus to begin recursion or repetition we need an initial condition where from we are starting that we have to know suppose we impose the condition of initial rest so if we impose this condition that means it is starting with a zero value so that means for n less than equal to minus one now look here n less than equal to minus 1 that means from here 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 wherever it is the signal amplitude will be 0 and therefore we can say that x n is 0 for all n less than equal to minus 1 and as we saying that the condition is rest the input is 0 therefore output will also be 0 during this period so we can say that y n is also 0 for this period now if we replace n by minus 1 then we will get the initial rest condition that is y minus 1 will also be equal to 0 and this is the initial condition okay so we had uh, the input given we know the equation we know the conditions of initial um, uh, value or the validity and then we know the value of the uh, output at uh, the in initial condition or at uh, y is equal to zero okay keep this in mind we need to find this one and as we just discussed in the previous slide also at n is equal to 0 we write this equation as y0 x0 half y0 minus 1 that means what is x0 it will be k at remember here at n is equal to 0 at n is equal to 0 the signal is present and its value is k so we write k what about this one half y minus 1 we found from here y minus 1 is 0 therefore it will be half 0 that means y0 is equal to k y0 is equal to k now we move on to n plus 1 in the same equation we put n is equal to 1 this this now to find y1 we need to find uh, y0 and x1 now look from here our signal is present only at 0 only at this point if you move here the signal will be 0 that means x1 will be 0 what about this one half y0 y0 we have calculated from here to be k so we put it half k and this will be equal to 1 over 2 k next we put n is equal to 2 
so y2 will be x2 half y again x2 is 0 y1 is this value so 0 half and half k it will be 1 over 2 square k so we have found these and we can just say that similarly yn from this formula will be 1 over 2 power n 1 over 2 power 2 1 over 2 power n multiplied by k valid for all n greater than equal to 0 so this is our output for the input signal k now the question has asked to find the impulse response now impulse response as we discussed is just k with one so setting k is equal to one the impulse response which is also called hn will be this value and to represent that it is greater than equal to zero we just write un with it the unit function so I hope you have been able to follow this. Note that the causal LTI system in this example has an impulse response of infinite duration. Now remember as the n keeps on increasing the value will become infinite. Such a system are commonly referred to as the infinite impulse response or IIR system. So just keep this in mind. I hope you have been able to follow this. Please let me know through your comments. Thank you.